Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. A couple days ago, I did a video giving everyone their first glimpse of Luminar AI. In that video, I mentioned that if anyone had any questions, that in a couple days I'll do another video and do my best to answer those questions. And that's what we're going to be doing now. Now, I'm going to start out with a question that I don't know the answer to. A couple people asked me, does it run any better on a Windows computer than Luminar 4 does? And the truth is, I don't know. I no longer own a Windows computer. I had a laptop, but my son needed a computer for school. Around six months ago, I gave it to him. So I don't know the answer to that question, but I can tell you what they told us. Uh, part of the reason why they kind of scrapped Luminar 4 and built Luminar AI from the ground up is for that reason. They want Luminar AI to run more effectively and efficiently on both platforms, that is OS X and Windows. And for those of you that don't know, uh, originally, when Luminar first came out, it was a Mac-only application. After a year or two, they ported it over to Windows. And this is my opinion, not something they said. Um, my opinion, that may be why it never really ran well on a Windows computer, because it really was a Mac app that they tried to make work on a Windows machine. Hopefully, Luminar AI is better, but I really have no way of knowing that. So that's that. Other people were asking me, how does it run in general? Well, on my Mac, it runs great. Um, it, it has a couple minor little issues, but it is early beta. I mean, this is like the first beta release that they have. And it's never crashed. It's never locked up. A couple little things, uh, like sometimes when you click on something and there should be like a drop down for composition AI or something, sometimes that is grayed out and you can't click on it. But if you wait a second or two, then all of a sudden it becomes active. But then other times it works immediately. So that is just something that I'm sure will be fixed by the uh, release when it comes out in December. Now, uh, Granted, my computer is really fast. Uh, for those of you that might be interested, in the description below this video, I'll have a link or I'll just have a list of my com the specs of my computer. Because, of course, any application is hardware specific. It's going to run better on some machines than it's going to run on other machines. So I'll give you an idea of what I'm running it on so you get an idea of you know, the op you know, how it's operating, I guess. Now, the other question I received is, all right, you told us that it has templates, that's different, and that it no longer has layers, and I'll talk more about that in a moment, but what is different about it? Well, I thought I'd just show you the tools so you could see what's different and what's the same. Uh, we'll go over to the Essentials panel first, and Composition AI is the crop tool. It basically works ex identically to any crop tool, all right? You know, you could come in, go to the drop down, pick your ratio, grab handles, move them around. You could straighten the image. You could uh, change aspect ratio. All that stuff could be done right here. What is different about it, they added something to it, Composition AI. Apparently what they've done is they've looked at hundreds or maybe thousands of images that professionals cropped. And because Luminar AI examines an image and knows the elements that are in an image, uh, mentioned this in the first video. It looks at an image. It knows where a lake is and what a lake is. It knows a mountain. It knows a stream. It knows a bird. It knows a person, things like that. So it knows those elements. And since it examined how professionals crop images, it will come up with a suggested crop. And that's what this does. You don't have to use it though. So you could click on it and it comes up with a suggested crop. Now, I don't want to use it. I like my shot right out of camera as is. So uh, that's all that is, the crop tool. Erase tool, you know, sensor spots, things like that you do with the erase tool. That hasn't changed from Luminar 4. Light hasn't changed. That's, of course, white balance, contrast, highlight shadows, whites and blacks. A lot of this stuff is nested uh, into a tool. So whites and blacks is nested. Just remember to look for it. Curves is there. It's nested. That's all there. Enhance AI hasn't changed. Structure AI hasn't changed. Color AI, that hasn't changed. And nested in there is the HSL tab. Black and white hasn't changed. Details hasn't changed. Denoise, landscape, none of that has changed. And vignette, we'll jump over to the creative panel. Sky AI hasn't changed. Augmented Sky AI hasn't changed. Atmosphere AI, that's new. And I'm going to give you a better example of this uh, with a different image. Let's just talk about it briefly. Um, again, 
uh, Luminar AI examines a scene and it knows the elements in that scene. It also develops a depth map. Depth map. It knows what's in the foreground, midground, background, and it could hopefully more effectively add fog or mist to an image. In this case here, this specific image, why don't I just tell you, um, I started out, I used a template, evening chill, but you can see how it says edit there. I applied the template, then I went in and I edited off that template. And one of the things I did was atmosphere. Let me give you a before after. There's the unprocessed image. And there's my processed image in, in uh, Luminar AI. So you can see that I added that fog in the background with the atmosphere tool. Sun rays hasn't changed, dramatic hasn't changed, mood or LUTs. Uh, the template added a LUT, wildlife safari evening, and uh, that I left in there. Toning is split toning, that hasn't changed. Matte is the same, mystical hasn't changed. Glow hasn't changed. Uh, film grain hasn't changed. Let me go to portrait. We have face AI, skin AI, body AI, and high key. And I'm going to talk more about all of this in a moment with an example. And then we have the professional uh, panel. We have optics, super contrast, color harmony. And you go there, you can see you have brilliance, warmth, and you have a lot nested in there. Color contrast, split color warmth, color balance. And then below that, dodge and burn and clone and stamp. So none of that has changed. Over here, we have local adjustments, local masking, basically. And I'm going to talk about that more specifically in a moment. And that basically is layers, uh, but you just don't see the layers. But I'll show you that in a moment. So uh, those are the tools. A lot of them are new or changed or, you know, whatever. One tool I'm not seeing is Boca AI. I had mentioned that in several of my videos. You can see they have it listed on their website right here. I... It's probably just not in my beta copy yet. So hopefully that will be out uh, soon. So you have that. Now I did want to talk, let's go to comp or go to uh, the atmosphere AI, but let's get a different image for that. Let's get this image here and uh, we'll go to the creative tab and we'll go to the atmosphere AI. Now this is one of the things that I mentioned. It's kind of a little bit of a bug. You can see how I can't get this drop down here. Turn it off, turn it on. There it is. Now it's there but that will hopefully will be fixed by the time it's out. So what you do is uh, because Luminar AI develops a depth map for the image, it knows where the foreground, midground, and background is, and knows the elements, you could more effectively add fog, layered fog, mist, or haze to an image. For example, here, as I turn that up, you could see how the fog is behind her. It's not in front of her or on her face or anything like that. You could bring it more to the foreground with the depth, and you could still see how it just kind of touches her. It doesn't really cover her up. Um, in lightness, you can make it darker if you want. Now, there's different uh, modes. Again, there's layered fog. Now, layered fog is more kind of in the like lower third area there, and then you could bring it down to the foreground if you want. Um, mist, I, you know, to tell you the truth, I haven't seen much of a difference between mist and fog there's fog there's mist pretty similar right and haze is kind of more in here uh, i think that'd be more maybe applicable to a cityscape when you want to add some haze down kind of like in the middle of the image so that would be that in this image here i think maybe a bit of fog might be kind of interesting right so there's before and there's after so Maybe not as bright, but you get the idea. So that is the Atmosphere AI uh, that is new in Luminar AI. Now, let's talk about layers for a moment. I kind of say they're there, but they're not there because you can't actually click on them. But you could do things to an image that would require layers. For example, uh, let's go to this image here. Uh, for this image here, all I've done to it is light. Um, in composition, I cropped it because the um, the uh, roll of the black seamless paper is up here, and I cropped it out. And then I just made the blacks really dark, and I wanted their faces to kind of pop up, so I pop out. So I did light adjustments. But typically, we're going to go to the portrait adjustment. Let's go to face. Now we had a face light. You can see how it does all four 
guys, you know, if I wanted to slim their faces, it would slim all four of them. We don't want that, right? We want to just work on them individually. For example, uh, his eyes and his eyes are very, very dark brown. There's no detail in them. Uh, his eyes are lighter brown, so we could see some detail. But if I wanted to bring that lighter brown out in their eyes, if I went to iris and I changed it to brown, it will change his blue eyes to brown too. So it does all all four sets of eyes. We don't want that. We want to do them individually. Now in the past, you would do a new layer, do the eyes on one person on one layer, do another layer, do the eyes on another layer, and so on. Well, you don't have to do that here. What you do is you go to local masking, click that. Then you go to add, and we'll go to face AI. Now we need to tell it what face to do. So we're going to use a brush. You could use a radial brush or a gradient mask if you want as well. But we'll use a brush and we'll do this guy here first. So we'll come over here and we're going to just mask his face. So we're telling this face AI that we just turned on to just do this face. All right, no other face. So then we'll come down to eyes and we'll give him lighter. Well, let's say we want to give him blue eyes for the sake of argument. See how now it just made his eyes blue and didn't change anyone else. But we'll go to brown. We want to give him lighter brown eyes. We could do a bit of an iris flare. Let's see how. Just a little bit, though. We don't want him to look, you know, freaky. All right, so we did that. That's done. On, so his eyes are done. Now I want to do his eyes. So I'll do another local masking adjustment. We'll do another face AI. We're going to again use the brush and we're tell it now to do this face, right? And we'll jump down to eyes and I want to give him, uh, again, I'll just to, sh you know, better show it. Maybe I'll make his eyes blue. You see how it just did his eyes, but I'll go to brown and uh, give him a little bit of an Irish flare, uh, Irish flare, not an Irish flare. He is Irish and he probably does have an Irish flare, but We'll give him an iris flare. And that looked, you know, worked out well. So we have these local masking adjustments. I did two of them. You could do up to 10, not 10 of one and 10 of another and 10 of another, 10 total. So when I click on add, I could do any combination of 10, a basic skin AI, face AI, details AI, and texture. Uh, it's not details AI, it's details or texture. So you could do that and you could then you could see how you could mask it using either the brush, radial brush, or the gradient. So layers are kind of still there. It's just you just don't see them. They just made it simpler. It's easier to use. People get confused by layers. What is missing though, and from what my understanding is not going to be added, at least not in the near future, are luminosity masks. So if you were often using luminosity masking, uh, that is not something you could do. Uh, here. So, you know, that would require, of course, layering, layering two images, one on top of the other. And since layers aren't there, you can't do that. So, but local masking is, and you could do much of what you could do uh, with Luminar 4. You could do here in a, in hopefully an improved way, as far as what it does, it still can't do some things again, luminosity masking and so on. Now I will uh, just want to add real quick, that if you go to uh, specific tools like color, there is masking there. You, so you can mask individual tools as well, you know, to just one thing. So if I went to the um, creative tab and I went to, uh, or I'm sorry, the portrait tab and I went to face and I had this face light, I could mask this if I wanted just on one face. Like I could turn it this way, way up. I could get that mask. I'm going to get the brush and we're just going to put it on his face. Let's say, so you could do that there as well. All right. So the, the local uh, masking or the masking is available on these tools. All right. Uh, each, you know, each of the tools that are there. So hopefully that better, it kind of explains the, the uh, local masking and how it's kind of a substitute for discrete layers. Um, so that's that. Now, what else did we, uh, what other questions did I receive about this? Oh, all right, here's a simple one, actually. Um, somebody asked, when you export an image as a JPEG, does it still put .jpeg? And the answer is yes. So if I bring up the export dialog box, and you can see how it says 
whatever, you know, underscore DSC, whatever, dot JPEG, J-P-E-G. Yeah, it still does that. But I mean, you're going to change this most often anyway. So you could change this to a uh, great blue heron, oops, dot. And then you could just give it JPG. You can just call it dot JPG. I'll just do it to my desktop. And then it's going to export it to my desktop. And you could see it's right here. And you could see how it's dot JPG. So you can rename it, but by default, it does still do dot JPEG. Uh, so that's that. And I can't think of uh, off the top of my head anything else. Um, uh, so I think that's most of the common questions I received. Again, if you have any other questions, uh, put them below and I'll try to answer those in future videos. Uh, this, uh, again, I'll have all my computer specs listed in the description below the video. I'll also have a link uh, to their website and you could see everything they wrote here and all their samples here and so on. I do have a discount code, but I'm not sure if it works. It's working if the product is on pre-sale. But you can give it a try. I'll have all that listed in the description below this video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.